أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصلى الله على محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Once again, it's an honor um, to be here to be addressing a very elite section of our society. Um, as the topic goes, um, value of the night, it's a very obvious topic. It's something that I have touched on in my past lectures here. And in my Saturday sessions also, I keep on mentioning it here and there. It's something that is, I'm very much, something that I'm very much interested in. And I feel that uh, it's a very, it's something that we've neglected for a long time, uh, individually, as a community. Um, it's something that should be taken more, should be given more importance. Um, the night, we take it very casually and we take it lightly and we don't give it the importance that it deserves and as a result it affects our health, our lives and our progress generally. So let me start by just speaking about one of my patients um, in my clinic. Of course she had come in for some dental issues and when we sit with patients we have to take a dental history but along with that a medical history is vital. We have to take a medical history and we tend to sit and, and talk. So in talking to this patient, she says that during the day I feel very lethargic, um, my energy levels are very low, forgetfulness, I tend to forget quite often, headaches, headache. Um, continuous headache throughout the day for which they have to take painkillers. Loss of libido, sex drive has gone down. Gaining weight, mood swings, very irritable. The patient's telling me that I get irritated very fast. Of course, I had to probe her to get these answers out of her. So then I asked her, okay, do you sleep well at night? And she says, no. Actually, I don't. I don't get much sleep um, at night. And sometimes I even have to take sleeping pills. Something very simple, like sleep. Because of lack of sleep, all the symptoms. There are some who say, when I ask them, do you sleep well? And they say, the moment I put my head on the pillow, I crash. I just fall asleep. So then I ask them, do you snore? And they say, I wouldn't know, but yeah, my spouse tells me that I, I do snore. Now, traditionally, whenever we hear somebody snoring, be it an adult, be, a, be it a child, we take it to be a sign of very deep sleep, and we feel that this person is sleeping well. But now, there's a whole field of dentistry that deals with sleep disorders, sleep dentistry. So snoring actually is not a sign of deep sleep. What happens is when you're snoring, that shows you're not breathing well while sleeping. And it's because of the excess fat around the neck area that obstructs your airway. So while sleeping, you're not breathing well. So there isn't enough oxygen going to the brain while sleeping. Not only that, but it leaves you with nightmares. So. These people who tell me that they snore quite a bit, the next question if you ask them, do you get nightmares? Is yes, get a lot of nightmares, and rightly so. When there isn't enough oxygen going into the brain, they do get nightmares. So that needs to be sorted out. Snoring is not normal. Uh, it needs to be taken care of. It's mild, you just need to change the position. But some people, because of excess fat, now you get appliances that need to be worn. Because if the snoring continues, this person will not sleeping well, as much as it might show that they're sleeping well because of snoring, but in reality, they would end up with the same symptoms as this patient that I was describing. So when they wake up in the morning, rest is supposed to refresh you, sleep is supposed to refresh you. 
But yet when you wake up in the morning, you are tired. You are tired of sleeping. Sleep was supposed to refresh you, but when you wake up in the morning, you are tired. And during the day, you still... But I, I was asleep. But you still feel tired, you feel very irritable. It's because the quality of sleep is not good. Now, these are issues about people who are consciously making an effort to sleep at night. So after the sun setting, they decided to go to sleep. But unfortunately, the quality of sleep is not good. So they first suffer the consequences. But what about those people who when the night comes, they consciously don't go to sleep? They resist sleep. What would be happening to them? That's even a bigger problem now. So a person who goes to sleep is respecting the body cycle. And they go to sleep. But unfortunately, due to some pathologies, they don't sleep enough, the quality of sleep is not good. But people who consciously resist sleep and try to stay awake, we usually see this trend amongst teenagers, and I'll explain to you why later on. But even elders now, let's, so we have all our functions. So even as a community, we don't seem to be respecting the night time. So most of our functions are at night, not only early night, but late night. And these days, even biryani is served at around 9.30, 10. So you can imagine what must be happening. At around 10, 10.30, biryani is served. Or restaurants, if you pass by town, packed with people, eating till midnight. So most of the restaurants are open. That shows that this trend is increasing. In fact, they say it's becoming a norm now. So 20% of the working population, this is in the US, take this to be normal. So now you have the night shifts. People work night shifts, it is called the, it's called the graveyard shift. So, what humans are doing is they're trying to extend their time. This is capitalism. Profit is what determines this, your success in life. So to increase the profits, people start working 24 hours, extend the day. I remember in my childhood, we would go to the factory in the morning with, with my father. 7, 7.30, we'd be at the factory, 3 o'clock, month, and you'd be back home. And evening, we'd have cricket practices, or we'd go outings until sunset time. That's not heard of these days. If you tell somebody to close the office at 3 o'clock these days, it's, it's like, what's happening to you? So 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, even this part of the world. So what we're doing is we're extending our day, and as a result, sleep is also delayed, so we are not respecting the night. So there is a lot of research going into this, because more and more people are experiencing the symptoms that I have just described, and yet the solution is very, very simple. So the demands of life are pushing their day beyond limits, yet they suffer the consequences. So you say you use your youth to gain so much wealth, then in your old age you use all that wealth to regain your health. That is the equation that is being followed just now. So scientists say that electricity, no doubt, has been the biggest blessing that we've had, but yet it has changed our lives. With the coming in of artificial lights, this is one of the biggest things that has disrupted our sleep pattern. And that's the reason we don't respect the night. So we extend the day using the artificial lights that we have. So we all have an internal biological clock, which is called the circadian clock or the circadian clock. I don't know how it's really pronounced. So what happens is when the sun sets, usually there's a slight drop in temperature, but more importantly, the light goes down. So it becomes dark. When it becomes dark, there's less light entering the pupil of the eye. The moment that happens, there's a small gland on the top of our heads here, which is called the pineal gland. So the pineal gland, as a result of less light going into the eye, starts producing a hormone called melatonin. So melatonin is called the sleep hormone, or it's called the Dracula hormone. Why? Because it's only released at night. So when you watch Dracula movies, horror movies, it's usually focused around the night time. So this is also called a Dracula hormone. It is only released during the night time. 
So naturally, as the name suggests, it is responsible for sleep. So melatonin is the one that causes sleepiness in us. So it is natural. So now research shows that it is also seen in animals. Melatonin is not only humans. In fact, it's even seen in plants. Melatonin is also seen in plants. So they're doing research on plants also. So if we were to see more of this melatonin, they say it starts getting released in the third month after birth. Third month after birth is when it starts getting produced. And it peaks at the age of one to three years. That's when the release is maximum. And then it stays steady. But with age, what happens is it starts decreasing. So a 70 year or old, 70 year old would have a quarter level of an adult or of a child. So the melatonin levels in a child compared to that of a 70 year old, the 70 year old would just have 25% of melatonin. And that explains why elderly don't get enough, they feel they're not getting enough sleep. But in reality, that's physiological. With age, their sleep tends to decrease at night. They get distressed about it. Like, what's happening? I'm not getting sleep at night. And they go to the doctor, and what does the doctor do? He gives them melatonin. Tablets contain melatonin. Give it to them, put them to sleep. But physiologically, there's already a decrease in levels of melatonin. So not, they're not meant to be sleeping that much. During puberty, they say, uh, and this needs to be verified, but they say okay, the melatonin release is slightly delayed after sunset. So that's why um, children going through puberty or adolescence, they tend to sleep a bit late because they say they don't feel sleepy. But I think if they're disciplined, it does come back to level, but it needs to be verified. So this is as far as sleep is concerned, melatonin. But it has two main other functions. One, it's an antioxidant. When you talk of cancer, antioxidant is something that is really catching on just now. Go for antioxidants as an anti-cancer agent. So buyu, for example. Buyu without the sugar or buyu juice. Uh, people are using it in big amounts. It's an antioxidant. Or chilies, they say, antioxidant. It has powerful anti-cancer properties. So that is one. Melatonin is a very powerful antioxidant. And secondly, it strengthens the immunity of the person. So with melatonin, it's not only sleep, it's not only an antioxidant, but it also assists in the immunity. So if you've understood this, then we'll come to understand the articles that are being published now. So BBC published a few articles and so many other journals. And there are so many associations that are being formed. There's an international association for darkness. So it's an association that is promoting darkness. And what they're doing is they're complaining, they're raising a voice about the level of illumination around the world. With so many lights, they say that it's affecting humans, it's affecting animals. Because even animals who are living side by side with humans, now even they are confused. So they start migrating. There's a whole article in National Geographic as to how some animals have become extinct. They've run away from humans because of this lighting factor. Humans use so much of light, so much of light, that these animals don't, they feel that they don't belong here. And they have to migrate to go to a darker place. So migrating just because of illumination. So International Association for Darkness. There's an International Association for Sleep Disorders. So big seminars that happen just to discuss sleep. Why? Because they say with these sleeping problems, with humans extending their days, with humans increasing the illumination, their immunity is going down because the circadian clock is disrupted. So melatonin levels reduced or delayed or is resisted, decreased immunity, cancers. Cancers are on the rise. So they say rectal colonal cancers in men and breast cancer amongst women. There's a 60% increase in the risk of breast cancer for women who tend to resist sleep. So this excessive illumination, and now with the coming in of televisions and mobile phones, it is not making things any better. So cancer is going up, they say it's one of the reasons is 
this stress because they are not sleeping well during the day they cannot handle stress so stress levels are also going high hypertension depression stomach ulcers heart disease this was very interesting it was new to me also they say in the second half of the 20th century childhood leukemia has gone up by 50% childhood leukemia has gone up by 50% and they still doing a research they saying it could be because of light being introduced into the kids rooms so we don't want our kids to sleep in the dark so we tend to keep the light on at night or children being exposed to lighting devices be it computers be it phones be it television still late at night so they say there is a rise in childhood leukemia and one of the reasons they attribute it to is this that it could be that humans are not respecting the night or there's excessive light that they're being exposed to and all these diseases are coming up so this is as far as science is concerned but quran clearly talks about it so surah rum um the surah that we recite on the nights of of qadr that's a night to change your destiny if this a time to change this habit is the night of the destiny laylatul qadr so dhahar al fasad fi al barr wal bahr bima kasabat aydi an nas liyudhiqahum ba'd alladhi amilu la'allahum yarji'un corruption has appeared in the land and sea because of the doings of the people's hands it's we who created light and we don't know the limit light is good but we tend to misuse it in in greed that he may make them taste taste something of what they have done so that they may come back sometimes the diseases are introduced for us to wake up so science is coming up with all this data is for us to wake up not to get scared for us to wake up and maybe make a change so laylatul qadr we are reminded dhahar al fasad fi al barr wal bahr bi ma kasabat aydi an nas we need to identify these fasads that are happening i went through the concordance of the quran and just went through the verses that talk about the night just the night there are almost 100 verses that talk about the night in different contexts so but there are at least five verses that talk about the sukoon of the night that god has made the night for you to rest specifically to rest so for example chapter 10 verse number 67 surah yunus surah furqan chapter 25 verse number 47 surah naml chapter 27 verse number 86 surah qasas chapter 28 verse number 72 surah rum again the same surah that we recite every laylatul qadr chapter 30 verse number 23 so let's just take one example if we just take surah rum for example um just to get a good feel of what god is talking about so verse number 23 of surah rum yeah wa min ayatihi so the sequence of the ayati god talks about the spouse god talks about creation so one of the ayat wa min ayatihi manamukum bil layli wan nahari wa ibtigha'ukum min fadli ان في ذلك لا ايات لقوم يسمعون the concluding verse is very important for those who listen and of his signs is your sleep by night and day and your pursuit of his bounty there are indeed signs in that for people who listen so this is just a small example but if you go through all these verses they talk about rest they talk about rest at night there are some verses which talk about the night but it talks about the conjugal relationship between a husband and wife especially during the holy month of ramadan because that's when people had doubts there are some verses that talk about worship the importance of worship during the night so concluding all this there's a very nice hadith of the prophet which has stuck with me from the first time i read it so the prophet says i've just rephrased it slightly 
if you have to stay awake at night do it for four reasons other than that it's better for you to go to bed it's better for you to sleep what are these four reasons number 1 worship if you stay up for worship it's worthwhile number 2 you stay up awake you stay up for your spouse number 3 you stay up to gain knowledge and number 4 for traveling so prophet says other than these four reasons it's better for you to sleep at night i don't see sports in this list neither do i see eating on this list baraza i don't see it in the list yes if you are gaining knowledge through baraza sab but it's not there in the list so individually even as a community where are we heading this is a simple hadith of the prophet so usually when we address this problem we look at it from the spiritual point of view oh these are the na- days of ibadat you know in ramadan don't you should be worshiping people don't understand this but if you tell them from the physiological point of view that baba you're hurting your body maybe maybe they'll understand so i tried to nail it in the gens it has worked it has not worked so i thought maybe this will be the right audience and i'll come to that why why it's specifically this audience because now all this time it was the men uh, for the night functions in the holy month of ramadan now the women are catching on so now you have night out for ladies also ladies also want to participate in sports activities and these are the mothers of tomorrow so if the women are catching on that shows where is the generation going now if you are resisting your body clock your internal body clock and with all the symptoms that have been mentioned we are looking for progress we are looking for a positive attitude in life we are looking for a life free of sickness we are looking for prolonging life and we are looking for spiritual health the answer is in respecting the night when night falls there is a big message sheikh mahmud daya when i was in iran recently when he talked about the namaz timings and he mentioned something very simple yet very interesting he said if you notice all the namaz times there is something happening in the skies so for example fajr subah hasadik subah kadim zuhur the sun is right above your head and maghrib is when the sun is setting so these are big happenings that are but we are so engrossed in our worldly pursuits that we don't even give it time so even if you go to stadiums they switch on the flood lights quite early so by the time the sun sets you don't even make out that the sun has set the lights take over so similarly in the streets also these days we hardly make out sometimes that the sun has set we don't even see the sunset and we are very unfortunate in that way we are on the east coast of africa so we get to see the sunrise of course most of us don't see it but we miss out on the sunset zanzibar i was in zanzibar so zanzibar town the way it's located you always get to see the sunset you don't get to see the sunrise if on the east coast of zanzibar you get to this you get to see the sunrise but if you're in zanzibar town you get to see the sunset beautiful it's a fantastic phenomenon which when observed it brings a lot of sukoon in a person but at the same time there are bodily changes that are happening with the sunset which also need to be respected sheikh muhammad khalfan of qom he has this friday flashes that he gives out i don't know if you receive it some of you might be receiving it he gives out a message on friday friday flash so there was one whereby he talked about the worship of the night how important it is so he says all the mujtahidin recommend waking up in the late hours of the night uh, why because they say there's a good harmony between the communications of the heart and that of the speech usually during the day our heart might be feeling something else but our speech might be saying something else but that time of the day at that time of the night the early hours 
or the late hours of the night, so just before Fajr. That's the time when there's a perfect harmony between what's going on in the heart and what's going on in the tongue. So whatever you say out at that time, there's no nifaq. So God tells Nabi Musa, Sheikh Alfan is mentioning this, that a person who says that he loves me, but yet he sleeps the whole night, he's a liar. So now we come to a conclusion. But before that, Sheikh Mansur Lagai was here. Now I'm talking about two contrasting things here. I was talking about sleep, the importance of sleep. Now I'm talking about the importance of staying awake. There's no contrast here, I'm going to explain. Sheikh Mansour Leghai was here recently. There was a lecture that he gave Saturday morning here. He says the most important part of the day is 15 minutes before Fajr, extending right to the time of Qadha of Fajr. So it's usually one hour, 15 minutes. He says, why? He says, because that's the time God gives out risk. Risk is not only the material risk that we know of, but he gives us spiritual risk also. So your health, your wealth, your spiritual spirituality, all depends on this time. This is the apex of the day. So he says it's very, very important to stay up during this time. Otherwise you miss out on the rest of the day. So now let's tie up the loose ends. One side we say sleep, one side we say stay awake. The purpose of man staying awake at night is in pursuit of his worldly gains, capitalism. He wants to get more and more. As a result, he extends his day, he denies himself sleep, denies others sleep. Corporate world, they work 24-7. Yet, what they want to attain is health, wealth, and some spirituality. So God says, I will give out these things early in the morning, but you'll have to stay up during that time. So if this is the focus of our day, whatever we want from our lives is going to be given in this one hour of the day. Our whole cycle should be focused to make maximum use of that one hour of the day. We have to stay up during that time. To be able to stay up during that one hour, we need to sleep early. You can't stay up at that time if you have not slept well at night. So we need to start respecting the night. If we respect the night, then we can make use of this one hour. I remember Sheikh Khalidina telling us, that in some hadith it is mentioned that this one hour, the dua that we do, the efforts that we put in, in this one hour of the day, 15 minutes before Fajr to the Qadha time, the efforts are worthier than a whole day's work. So you go to your farm and put in so much effort, or you go to your office and work so hard, more than all the efforts that you put in during the day, the efforts that you put in in that one hour are worth here. So it's time we change our focus. As individuals, as communities. If you want to progress, we need to make use of that one hour in the morning. For that, we need to start respecting the night. If we respect the night, we'll be able to make use of this one hour. If we make use of this one hour, if we individually we progress, as a community also will, will progress. Sheikh Khalidina said that the efforts that we put in to gain maximum out of this golden hour of the day, the early morning hour, 15 minutes before Fajr to Qadha, these efforts are worthier, they give out more results than your whole day's effort at work. That doesn't mean that you just stay up in this one hour and then go to sleep the rest of the day, no. You've got to put in efforts but not as much as we think we should be doing. I feel that if you put in effort during this one hour, there'll come a time when we'll be able to close our offices at three. We'll have sukoon. Bas, say you have a jai bacha pas. Let's spend time with our spouses. Let's spend time with our families. That's not happening. We are in pursuit. So you have the corporates 
who make their staff work. So sometimes the staff also want to go home, the bosses say no, because the boss is also in search of something and the staff is also in search of something. So just imagine a community where everybody has sukun. The boss has sukun, the staff has sukun, everybody goes home. I, I specifically see this in Ghulam Bhai Bimani. Uh, heads off to him. I see him closing the shop at four in the holy month of Ramadan. He lets his staff go home. This requires guts in this day and age when times are tough. But yet, four o'clock I see, or when I go to Tanga, there's the blue room. Whoever goes to Tanga doesn't miss out on blue room, the kebab place. He does his work, I think by 11, 12, he's done. Khalas, he's done for the day. There are very few people who can do that. I think it requires guts just to say, bas, enough is, is enough. So this was one thing that I, this was an idea that I wanted to put across. Specifically for this crowd, because you are the ones who run a movement. And I'll come to that, why? You know, I was in Karbala, so this is one thing, we need to respect the night. The conclusion is we need to respect the night so that we can make use of the Fajr. That was one of the main purposes that I took up this topic. But there's another reason which, for which I can be criticized, but don't criticize me too much in the social media. I hope it's not controversial. I don't know if it will make sense. Of course, you can oppose it. It needs to be discussed. This is just my thought. You know, when I was in Karbala some time back, so early morning after Fajr, the Iranians have their majlis. And whenever I'm there, I try to go and sit for that majlis in the main sahan, with a little Farsi that I can understand. But there's a lot of electricity in that majlis. So once when I was there, there was an Ayatollah who got on the member. He was definitely Ayatollah. He was a mujtahid. Um, so he got on the member and whatever little I could catch from what he was saying, so he was talking about the Surah of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, Inna Anzalnahu Fi Laylatul Qadr. And he gave a very different interpretation, which I also saw in the resources later on. So he says this Surah was specifically referring to Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. Laylatul Qadr is Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. How? So he says that there are two parts to this, Laylatul Qadr. The night of power. So he says the word Layl refers to Bibi Fatima and Qadr is the power. Why? He says that Layl, that night time is very close to God. As he tells Ambi Musa, if a person says that he loves me but he doesn't make use of the night, he's a liar. So the night time is a time which is very close to God. So he says that Bibi Fatima salam, was very beloved to God. So he gives us gives her this title or he refers Bibi Fatima Ali to Bibi Fatima alayhi salam as the Layl. Something very close. But the night of power. Inna anzalnahu filiratul qadr. Why? He says, because the Prophet was very distressed. The Bani Umayya were giving him a very hard time. So in consoling the Prophet, he says he was given Laylatul Qadr, he was given Bibi Fatima alayhi salam as a power. So, this was the power that was given to the Prophet. How? Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Wa ma adra kama laylatul qadr. Prophet is told, do you know the power of this lady? This is Mother to Zahra. So, this is specifically a conclusion for that. Do you know the power of this lady? Wa ma adra kama laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr is khayrun min alfi shahr. This lady is worth. So, this was his interpretation that She's worthier than eight years of your life. Alfi Shahar is eight years. Why? He says because the reign of Bani Umayya lasted for around eight years. So he says, this blessing that I'm giving you, O Prophet, is better than these 80 years. It's more powerful than these eight years of Bani Umayya. So don't get distressed. Khayrun min Alfi Shahar. Tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi idni rabbihim min kulli amr. We all know in the hadith is mentioned that the angels were descending on Baby Fatima. Tanazzalul malaikat wa ruhu fiya bi'adhni rabbihim kulli amr. 
Salam unhiya hatta matla'i fajr. For him, the fajr was the appearance of the 12th Imam. So he says, this blessing that I'm giving you, O Prophet, in the form of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam, is going to last you till the time of the Zuhur of the... The 12th Imam is a descendant of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. These are the effects of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. This was his interpretation. But from that, the Layl, referring to Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. <clears throat> and who is Bibi Fatima alayhi salam? She is Sayyidatu Nisa'il Alameen. She is the chief of the women, min al awwalina wal akhirin, women of the first times and the end times. If she is referred to as the Layl, and Layl is meant for sukoon, it's the worship, that's where the power lies. And if she's a role model for the women, then you can also be the Layl. So women need to attain these powers of the night. Not only the physical powers, but the way the Bibi Fatima salam was to the Prophet and to the Ahl Bayt, similarly, you women can be the Layl of our generation, of the families that you have. Laylatul Qadr, you are the knights of power. You are the power behind the families, the generation, the movement. You are the engines, you are the heat. Yes, men need to start valuing you. Men also need to start valuing the night. They need to start valuing the women, the role of the women. You've been given a raw deal, accepted. Women have been oppressed, women have been, they've not been given their rights. They have been abused. That is to do with the men. We have failed to realize the value of the night, the power of the night. But yet the women themselves also have failed to realize their own potentials. So what they're doing is they're trying to become like the men. Feminists will not like these, this phrase. Men, women are in pursuit of what the men have. Because what men have, we also want the same things. So in Quran, Surah Yasin, God says, لَشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَنْ تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرُ وَلَا اللَّيْلُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارُ وَكُلُّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُمْ Neither it behooves the sun to overtake the moon, nor may the night outrun the day. And each swims in its own orbit. We have our own roles. If the women understand the power that they have, and you start pursuing the day now, the night has enough power. Why are you going behind the day? The night has its own duty, the day has its own duty. If we do enough, so the night here could stand for the hijab, night also stands for the covering. So night hijab needs to be maintained. In pursuing the man, we compromise on our hijab, the women. We want to be known, now with coming of Facebook and Twitter, we expose everything. Layl talks about doing things undercover the way Bibi Fatima salam, did. Yes, when there was a need, she came out. But even when she came out, there was a hijab that was placed in front of her while she talked. So when there's a need, yes, you should come out. But most of her life, everything was done in the night. It was done undercover. But the power is seen till Fajr, till the coming of the 12th Imam. So I feel that in respecting the night, yes, there's a physical night. But a metaphysical night would be the women. If women start veiling themselves, they start veiling the hijab, they start veiling their roles that they can play. The engine, the heat of the engine, the, the power that they can generate. This community can go faster and we can progress. But it's sorry to see that women try to emulate the men. They try to come out in the day. What they're trying to do is switch on the lights now. We want, to, we want to prolong the day. Light, the night is enough. God has given this power. And we have a role model which we need to follow, inshallah. So this was my conclusion, of course. This, this last part, this was specifically for Mother Suzahara because it is named after the Holy Lady and I feel night pertains to the Holy Lady. And it's our duty to emulate the Holy Lady as a role model, of course. If there are any questions, any suggestions, if in his opposition to what I have said, please feel welcome. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amya sifun. 
والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين any questions comments ji yes amen inshallah we men also need to try i think the the secret also lies in the men because this so if a man starts veiling the woman it's but natural that the woman will come out with her so it's it's both ways as much as the woman needs to respect herself the man it's high time we start respecting our spouses more importance need to be given to our marital lives to our marriages and i think this is the secret for the progress of this of our um, community our marriages need to be strengthened the relationship between the husband and wife this needs to be really really strengthened and it's very sad and this is my observation that in a month whereby we can travel a distance of 8 years the holy month of ramadan which we are preparing for what we do is there's a break up of families from the time of iftar to the next iftar the families don't even sit with each other parents children everybody has their own schedules darsa boarding house goes on and on and on morning they're all sleep sometimes even for iftar they don't meet so the whole month either the husband wife don't see each other the children don't sit with the parents this is the time to strengthen our family relationship can be taken a journey of 80 years this is the time to value the night spiritually as far as the family is concerned as far as the woman is concerned yet we waste it our priorities are totally different so the timing also of this lecture we are approaching the holy month of ramadan if we start from now inshallah we will get our priorities right and make use of this auspicious time uh, of the year inshallah Yeah it's not about sleeping well uh it's about the number of hours so yes they sleep well but it must be less number of hours sometimes mm-hmm. but they can make up so that's the need so in my case my melatonin production might be quite high if i don't sleep enough then i have to catch up there's a sleep debt karjo you know but with the elderly uh their sleep requirement is reduced so they don't have to sleep as much as a child maybe is to make up for all the worship and this they far and maybe they cannot do enough but this is where they can make up you know the wisdom um yeah so your point is they don't need to sleep there and well or they don't get sleep what is your point i feel based on this research i feel even the need because there isn't enough melatonin production yeah. they get very distressed so even the need is less so they should not get distressed when they can't sleep enough you know no. but they should look for things to do when they're awake so usually when they lose sleep they get very distressed and that time of the night around 11 12 uh, the thoughts that come into the mind are not very healthy it's all negative thoughts so even with adults when we wake up 11 12 the tra thoughts and all those come at that time but when you wake up at early early in the morning 3 4 at that time the thoughts are very positive everything is worn out so we get enough rest so i think the elderly should not get distressed that is natural but they should look for things to do when they are awake make good use of yeah so there are six seven types of sleep that sheikh alfan had talked about in one of his lectures after zuhur they all end with lula qailula and failula and ghailula and so there are almost six to seven types of sleep and he mentioned the pros and cons of so the qailula is the one that is recommended the one just before zuhur or just after zuhur for a very short time um they say it was so important that the second caliph almost made it compulsory said whoever wants to wake up for namaz ashab should do qailula so qailula should become wajib now so that people wake up for uh, salatul layl but i know the sleep after fajr is not good especially before sunrise 
that's terrible. So I don't remember the details of, I have the notes somewhere, but we need to take care of. At the same time, if you go through the hadith, he says, don't give rest to the organ that is least thankful, and that is the eye. So the hadith says, don't pamper this eye because it does the maximum number of sins. So don't pamper it by giving it sleep, you know. But it needs rest also. So you give it sleep at the right time, make sure it's awake so that... So. Yeah. Yes, short nap. I think it should be before lunch. After lunch becomes very heavy. So maybe before lunch, I think it really refreshes you. Jay? Yes. Sahri, I think, is highly recommended. Uh, this again, I heard it from Sheikh. It's highly recommended to wake up in the morning for Sahri. That time is very uh, auspicious for, for eating during the holy month of Ramadan a little bit, but du'as also. Ilahi wa kafasailuna bibabik wa la dal fuqara wa bijanabik. That is a dua that we recite to dua iftata because we don't want to wake up in the morning. We just, out of convenience, finish it at night, then khalas. But it's actually supposed to be recited at Sahri time. That's a dua for Sahri time. It's recommended. It's recommended to eat before Fajr when you're fasting, rather than the night, as they call it, daku. That word also is daku. <laughs> okay. Ahsan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi.